This is an advanced tutorial for setting up a studio quality Google Voice Mixer using the latest version of Voice Meter. And ASIO Bridge and Jack Router, and especially Carla's Connection Bay. You'll need to be familiar with all these softwares and there'll be video links in the show notes in case you're not. Once you're up to speed on the basics of these, then we'll get started here. What we're doing with the latest version of Voice Meter is sending all its input audio to Jack Router instead of the sound card. And in Jack Router is an ASIO system. And that ASIO system goes to the Jack Router connection bay here. So we have the Voice Meter GUI. And we have, since we have it in composite mode, it sends input channels 1, 2, and 3 out to 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, respectively. So on the virtual input, which I have selected on my system as the default audio. So anything that is playing on my desktop is going to come into virtual input VB Audio Voice Meter VAIO and have adjusted the EQ accordingly to how it sounds to a caller on Google Voice. Now we're using the ASIO bridge as both the Google Voice input and Google Voice audio output. You'll need to select in the settings on Google Voice this sound card for the input for that that was the output and this is the output of the, which is actually the input. So anyway, there will only be one selection, so look for Hi-Fi cable. Look for Hi-Fi cable on the Google Voice microphone and speakers and select those. They'll need Everything needs to be the same sample rate. And I have all my sample rates at 48 and 16-bit, 48K and 16-bit. You can't mix sample rates and have this work very well. 44100 is just fine, but I prefer 48K. Okay, so the concept is we're sending all audio in to the VB ASIO bridge. And from Google Voice, it's coming out the ASIO bridge and going through some VST plugins so that we can modify the audio to shape it, to take some of the noise out, to increase EQ here and there so that we can make it sound as pleasant as possible. And I'll demonstrate that in just a second, the difference these VST teams plugins make. Now for the input of Google Voice we're going through an AGC here. This AG is set also as a ducking control so that when I talk out of channel 3 which is input 1 and since it's a mono microphone only channel 3 is active otherwise if it was stereo and this was not selected you would have 3 and 4 available. But since Google Voice is mono anyway we don't have to worry about that. So out of there, we're going into an EQ, a noise filter to take out background noise, and a de so that the EQ that I've adjusted and the treble on my S's, that quiets it down. And this is a free VST plugin. But first, let's go to the Google Voice output, and I'll show you the difference these VST plugins make. Now, being able to use VST plugins with Voice Meter really helps make the Google Voice experience a lot better. You, and it's almost professional level. Uh, if you can accept that you don't mind a little bit of artifacts from that noise filter. And there are probably many different uh, VST plugins that will do a similar job. These are just free ones that I found that seem to work okay for me. And in casual conversations, and I really enjoy talking to my dad, being able to share desktop audio with him and also hear him a lot better. He hears me a lot better. And with all these available inputs on voice meter, I can send in two separate inputs here. So if I had a, a, a record album, a CD, or a tape that I wanted to share with my dad, it would come in here. And since it's mono, I have both five and six as separate inputs. I'm also using, since I'm using a USB mic on this first input, 
I'm not using the laptop mic, and since it's stereo, I have two other inputs that I could use for some other hardware inputs. But this will show you the basic concept with just the way it is. I don't have anything coming in right now on 5 or 6 or the laptop microphone, but I do have desktop audio here and my USB mic. So the, this will be and give you the basic idea. This should be fine. So let's go over to the desktop audio. Often an era before advanced medical directives when doctors often made... So that's what it sounds like. I have a phone, just a regular desk, uh, landline phone with the, the microphone kind of laying on a speaker on an AM radio. And this is what it sounds like with the VST plugins. Public radio. A world dependent electron. Nothing is smaller, faster. So now I'm going to take take it out of this path and plug, plug it in directly. And you're going to notice that the doesn't sound as good from the EQ standpoint. And it also is noisy. What are the trade offs? Next time on the takeaway from PRI Public Radio International. The takeaway comes your way in 20 minutes at 11 on St. Louis Public Radio. And let me send it over here too. Support for St. Louis Public Radio comes from Opera Theater of St. Louis's Spotlight on Opera with composer Ricky Ian Gordon and librettist Royce Vavrek Monday night at the Ethical Society. Tickets at Experience. So that kind of gives you the basic idea. And we'll t take it back. Food, Metro Accessible. Information at artonthesquare.com. Okay, now what I'm going to do is it's take 1040. the EQ off, and then you already heard what the noise Welcome sounds like, so let's take the EQ out. And uh, my guest is Sam Keen, the uh, be this one here. science journalist whose new book is called The Tale of the Dueling Neurosurgeon. Here's what it sounds like with just Sam, the EQ off. a number off. of our uh, wonderful uh, listeners are uh, checking in with answers to some of the questions okay. people have posed. Okay, so you know there's probably quite a bit of difference there. When I took the EQ off, now we're going to take the compression expansion off. I'm done with it, she says. Um, another Pat uh, writes to us. Uh, and you probably noticed that there's a big volume difference. And now we'll take it off all the way. The Jury Association of America. Through their state affiliates, they call us and find the resources she needs. Perhaps we can put this email up on our... So, it's easy to set this up. And then this is VB Audio's uh, product, too. And this is a free VST plugin, his version 1. And the way I've done it here, and again, there's many different ways, it's just a way that seemed to work for me, is I listened to it and adjusted the EQ like I seemed like it was best to me. Then I had, or you would have your caller just, excuse me, quiet down for just a bit. And then apply the noise filter. And this is... Replugs free VST plugin called R E A F I R standalone. You put it in subtract mode, and then when things are quiet, and you can adjust this, I have mine at 2048. It comes default at 4096. Depends on your system which one works best. So when things are quiet, you've got your EQ just right. Set this and click that for a while. Click it for 15, 30 seconds and let it build up a noise profile. And this red line is the noise profile that I have after I EQ'd it. And then when you unclick it, then your voice will be above all that and get through where the noise will be quite effectively uh, reduced substantially. The trade-off is that you're going to have just some artifacts and some computer-like sounds that, that come and go but after a while you, you don't really notice that and having a more pleasant voice and a more clear and consistent volume and just better audio experience in general I think it's worth it and let me demonstrate some desktop audio here we've uh, I'm gonna play this for a second so one thing I've really enjoyed, uh, especially talking to my dad, is throwing out some sound bites from a soundboard. I reckon I'm right sure of it. But I like the way you talk. And we both like that movie, and we have a lot of a lot of fun with it. Uh, we also like to talk about lectures. 
I'm going to give you a message that is foundational in this morning service answering the question who and then what's unique about this setup is that my voice coming out of here to the loudmax AGC circuit which goes into the input of the Google Voice this is stronger than the desktop audio because I have the desktop audio with its own loudmax and that's set lower so that this will still adjust for it but when you set this lower uh, the output of this loudmax is a lot lower than the output of my voice so my voice will come into this AG circuit and take it up and it will be uh, above the level of this desktop audio so that my dad can hear it and same thing vice versa I can hear my dad over that desktop audio and I can control the amount either with this the output of this or I could set up another VST plugin and just set it in right here and that's pretty easy to do just add plugin here's another stereo gain sets it up down here click it comes at zero adjust it and you just wire it up and there it is right there so instead of going in directly you just wire it up this way and now that volume control will let me know how loud I want to hear it so let's play it again who is God and then in the second session, I will build upon this to uh, the uniqueness of Jesus. So that's very nice. Yeah, if he had an external MIDI controller, the other, you can set up it'll give me the a lot of these things. And this has a, a MIDI learn on it. So you that I'm click not, that uh, repeating and, myself, uh, and that then turn quickly, the knob that you want to uh, use to adjust which one. And you, can, you don't have to use your mouse and find these GUIs. Okay. Yeah, it pretty much sums up the desktop audio. And once you get all this wired up and adjusted just like you want it, you can save the setup right there. And label it however you want. And then before you load it up again, make sure you have both voice meter and the ASIO bridge already loaded. And then it should connect all the wires and bring all these VST plugins. This is pretty easy to scan. Once you set up your folder and you tell in the configure where the paths are. So in VST, mine's right here. So it'll scan all those folders. This is the engine I'm using with Carla. And then you just hit refresh, and you can click whatever, load them all up, hit start, and it'll scan for everything possible, and then all those will be loaded. And I have quite a few, and very effective. KX Studio and Falk TX has done amazing things for the Jack Audio. And a lot of these things are used by professional musicians. So I think that pretty much sums up everything. We've got my voice being affected by these three. Before it gets to Google Voice, it goes through an AG series circuit so that I can adjust the output of my voice with all the desktop audio. Or if you're using another sound card, which right here is the Behringer, and I have, if I had something hooked up to the inputs of those, I could adjust those so that my voice is always louder, so that as you're sharing, you can also make comments and hear each other. And same thing for the Google Voice output. Setting all these up is very effective so that you can get the best experience over audio on Google Voice. This is also possible that this might just be effective at being a podcast mixer so that if you were using this to interview somebody your mic and their audio coming in is you could use another VST to stream to open broadcast or whatever streaming service you're using you could take all this audio and stream it to that thanks for watching